Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome and welcome back to our immunology lectures. So in the last lecture, we were discussing about the cytokines in the last two lectures rather. And we will keep continuing on discussions on cytokines. So we have learned about what these cytokines are or uh, what grossly they do. Grossly we have uh, learned what they do and what these cytokines are and how they act. So, what is the function, what, what is the main mechanism of action of the cytokines? But we have not yet really explored the parts how or where these cytokines really work. So, as I told uh, probably in my last uh, lecture as well that the cytokines are one of the major mediators and these are small proteins or glycoproteins and they are the signaling molecules. So, primarily cell to cell signaling and they are involved in both the innate as well as in the adaptive system. So, cytokines are involved in both the innate system as well as in the adaptive system. So, it is not that they will only act on the innate system or only they are involved in certain uh, adaptive uh, pathways. So, it is involved in everywhere and most of the cells of the immune system or the immune cells, they secrete these cytokines under different conditions. Now, who is the maximum cytokine secreting cells? So, the answer is usually the most of the cytokines are usually secreted from the activated macrophages and of course also from the T cells, the different types of the T cells. So, active, activated macrophages, where do we get them? So, we get them primarily in the tissues when there is an invasion or when there is a pathogen invasion. If you remember uh, one of my uh, very first classes where I discussed about uh, the different parts of the innate and the adaptive system and the different uh, mediators of the innate immunity. Uh, so, in those uh, sections we had discussed about um, how a macrophage internalizes a uh, foreign pathogen or a bacteria by recognition of this PAMPs, this uh, pathogen associated membrane patterns and other many other membrane patterns are there. And by that these uh, cells of the immune system, they usually can engulf the pathogen and macrophages are one of the major primary immune cells or, or the major cells which can transmit this signal. So, they are transmitters of the signal. So, they can also present the antigen on their surface by the MHC molecules. So, they are anti antigen presenting cells at the same time they can secrete a lot of cytokines, a wide spectrum of cytokines are secreted from these activated macrophages and these cytokines can do a lot of things. So, if we come back again to the old uh, setup where we started in the beginning like uh, the innate system, uh, the innate system mostly. So, if for example, uh, there is a tissue damage in this part and that leads to entry of the different pathogens in this region. So, as we told that the primary cells that uh, goes in this uh, area or infiltrate this area are the neutrophils. So, the neutrophils and the tissue macrophages and of course, the mast cells or the granulocytes. So, they all are present in this area and these macrophages they can do what is known as phagocytosis. So, this is the process of phagocytosis, you already know these things. So, now 
once the macrophage has phagocytosed a pathogen or internalized the pathogen and has formed what we is known as a phagolysosome. This is the phagolysosome and this leads to it sends some signal and as we told we have uh, different types of signaling uh, pathways and it sends some signal that leads to the gene transcription and secretion of the cytokines. Now, what these cytokines they do? I told in at least in two of my last two classes that these cytokines are the major mediators of or the major signaling molecules and they send a lot of signals. So, it is not only in the innate system, but also in the adaptive system. So, what this and, and at the same time this activated macrophage can also at the same time it can activate it can activate the adaptive system. So, this is primarily this is done uh, by this uh, presentation of the antigen. So, it is because it is an antigen presenting cell. So, it can present the antigen. So, now what are the different cytokines? So, in, in one of my initial classes I told up to this that the macrophages they can get activated by phagocytosis after phagocytosis it is activated it secretes cytokines and then these cytokines can do a lot of things. What are the things and what are the different cytokines that are being produced? So, let us see what are the different different cytokines that are produced from an activated macrophage and what do they do actually. So, one of the very important um, uh, cytokines or rather it is the chemokines is the CX, the CXCL8 and this CXCL8 is actually required for migration of the different leukocytes. So, it attracts more leukocytes or helps in migration of migration of more leukocytes to the site of action. We have learned about how uh, this uh, migration of leukocytes, migration of the neutrophils, they help in uh, enhancement of inflammation, inflammatory responses. So, this is one of the way that an activated macrophage can secrete the CXCL8 which is a chemokine and this chemokine in turn can lead to or can enhance the migration of more leukocytes to the site of action or it brings or attracts more leukocytes to the site of the action. Then we have interleukin 6, this is one of the very important cytokines the interleukin 6. So, it does is interleukin 6 primarily activates lymphocytes. So, it activates the lymphocytes we will see uh, what interleukin 6 can do. Interleukin 6 has a very very important role um, in differentiation of the lymphocytes particularly the T cells the T helper cells and so it activates the lymphocytes activates lymphocytes and also it can stimulate stimulate the liver. Now, why the liver? Liver is one of the main source of various proteins and various proteins which are the immune, immune, immune proteins involved in the immune system. So, like the complement proteins for example. So, they are secreted from the liver. So, this IL-6 is one of the major cytokines which induces or which stimulates the liver to secrete more of these uh, proteins. Then we have one of the very important cytokines like interleukin 1 beta or IL 1 beta. Its primary function is to enhance, enhance vascular permeability and as well at the same time it can also 
uh, enhance the vascular permeability and enhance inflammatory responses. Okay. So, then we have interleukin 12 or IL 12. So, interleukin 12 which activates the NK cells or the natural killer cells. It can activate the NK cells, the natural killer cells as well as it helps in the differentiation of the CD4 plus cells. We will discuss about uh, this how it helps in differentiation in the CD4 plus cells or where it is required. So, it helps in differentiation of CD4 plus cells this interleukin 12 and then another important cytokine that is being secreted by the activated macrophage is the tumor necrosis factor alpha the TNF alpha the tumor necrosis factor or the TNF alpha. Now, TNF alpha also has a very important role in increasing vascular permeability. So, it also increases increases vascular permeability and helps the complement proteins the complement proteins. So, the complement proteins as I told the complement proteins are uh, mostly secreted from the liver, but they need to come to the tissue to the site of action. So, TNF alpha is one of those which helps in the, uh, the brings the complement proteins and helps the complement proteins to go to go to the site of action. Okay. So, these are the five major cytokines or the five major class of cytokines that are being um, uh, secreted by an activated macrophage. And these are the different actions that these uh, cytokines usually mediate. Apart from this, so now what among these as I told the most vital of these uh, cytokines are this interleukin 1 beta, the interleukin 6 and the TNF alpha. They mediate a lot of inflammatory responses. Now, these are mostly they mediate inflammatory responses and how and what are the inflammatory responses these cytokines they mediate. So, if we look into the TNF alpha, the IL 6 and interleukin 1 beta. So, let us see what exactly these four cytokines or these different four different cytokines they actually are doing. So, firstly they can increase the body temperature. So, one of the major functions of these cytokines is lead to fat hypothalamus and increases the body temperature. So, now you can understand why we get fever when we have an infection or when we have some external um, uh, pathogens infecting us. So, we can have a fever and that is uh, primarily mediated by this one of these cytokines. So, and then you lead that leads to a fat hypothalamus leading to enhancement or increase in the body temperature. So, you get fever. Then they also induces the bone marrow to produce more neutrophils, induce the bone marrow. and produce neutrophils, more neutrophils. So, because I told the neutrophils are the fastest acting cells of the immune system and they migrate to the site of action immediately. So, the requirement of neutrophil is also high. So, you need more neutrophils. So, now these, uh, these cytokines they can enhance the neutrophils. So, by inducing the bone marrow they produces 
more neutrophils and then they can also activate the dendritic cell. So, this is one of the very very important functions remember because uh, we also discussed previously the dendritic cells are one of the major connectors between the adaptive the innate and the adaptive system. So, they connect between the innate and the adaptive system other APCs also do, but the dendritic cells are one of the major uh, uh, cells of this type and they need to go to the adaptive system. So, they have to present the or help the adaptive system to develop the immune immunity. So, how do they do? How do they go to the adaptive system? So, that means they have to migrate to the lymph node somehow. So, they has to go to the mi migrate to the lymph node and meet the naive T and the B cells there. So, the naive T cells and the naive B cells they are waiting there and these dendritic cells are one of those major cells that connects between these two and this process of uh, movement from the uh, innate to the adaptive system is usually known as licensing of the dendritic cells. So, they become licensed to go to the adaptive system. So, that means they need a license or a pass to go there and uh, these, these uh, cytokines are one of those major mediators which helps in licensing of the dendritic cells. So, they also activates the dendritic cells activates activates the dendritic cells to move to lymph node. So, the dendritic cell moves to the lymph node okay. and as well as I told earlier they also stimulate the liver. So, the liver which is a major producer of different proteins like MBL, fibrinogen complement other complement proteins complement proteins this mannose binding lectin all these things they are produced from the liver and they go to the blood. Now coming to this part so this is mostly the innate part. So, these are the cytokines, there are many other cytokines which are working in the innate adaptive system, uh, sorry in the innate immune system, there are many cytokines, but these are the major cytokines or the major players that are secreted from immediately secreted after phagocytosis uh, by an activated macrophage and they mediate all these kind of different functions. Now, what happens? Now, this let us come to this dendritic cell, the, the tissue dendritic cell. Now, the tissue dendritic cell as I told it has to migrate to the lymph node, it has to go to the lymph node and where they can activate and help in the process of differentiation of the T cells, primarily the T cells and the B cells as well. So, now where what happens in these dendritic cells is that these dendritic cells These dendritic cells on their surface they start expressing the chemokine receptor. For example, one such receptor is CXCR, CXCR7 and as we describe the lymph node So, from the lymph node you have it produces CCL21. So, as you can understand from the nomenclature the CXCR7 containing this R indicates it is a receptor and CCLL21 it is the ligand. So, this CCL21 can bind to the CXCR7 and it can attract it towards the lymph node. So, basically this 
dendritic cells they can now enter the lymph node. Now, this process is called the licensing of dendritic cells. So, you can see that the cytokines rather the chemokines which is also which also falls in the class of the cytokines they have a very significant role in uh, licensing of the dendritic cells that is the migration of the dendritic cells from the innate to the adaptive system. Now, what happens in the adaptive system we have learned uh, when uh, we have learned about the T cells and the T cell uh, activation and the uh, maturation. So, we have learned there the T cells are activated by these antigen presenting cells by the class 1 or the class 2 MHC molecules uh, depending on the CD4 plus or the CD8 plus cells which cell is being activated. So, the T cells which are either CD8 or CD4 CD sorry which are either CD8 plus or CD4 plus cells. So, these cells they usually develop into T cytotoxic cells and these cells what is the fate of these cells? So, these CD4 plus cells they develop into the T helper cells. Now, this T helper cells there again when it comes to the T helper cells the T helper cells or the TH cells they are one of the major sources of cytokines all these T helper cells they produce different types of cytokines and the differentiation of this T helper cells there are different classes that also depends on the presence of the cytokine what kind of cytokine is being secreted and what kind of cytokine is being present depending on that it develops into a, a TH1 or a TH2 or a TH17 or T reg or T follicular helper cell. So, this T cells they contains on their surface the T cell receptor uh, and it can interacts it interacts with one of these uh, MHC molecules the class 2 MHC molecules uh, with the T cell receptor and of course, the co receptor and then there is the CD28 uh, interaction with the B7 the C D 28 to B 7 interactions all these things we have already discussed in our earlier classes. Now, once this interaction occur then depending on the types of cytokine that are present they can differentiate into different types of T cells. So, if if it is interleukin 12 I L 12 it usually produces a TH1 cell. If it is only interleukin 4, IL4, it develops to a TH2 cell. If there is interleukin 6, IL6, as well as IGF beta present, it develops into a T helper 17 or TH 17. If it is only IGF, if it is only IGF beta, then it develops into a T regulatory cell. So, T reg and if it is only interleukin 6, present then it develops into a T follicular helper cell. So, we have seen the uh, these follicular helper cells they are uh, required in the B cell development stages in the in the uh, um, lymph node. So, these are the different subtypes and they primarily are developed depending on the different types of interleukins or different types of cytokines that are present in the surrounding or in the environment. So, now this TH cells or the T helper cells, the T helper cells are also major source of different cytokines that can mediate different functions. So, in the adaptive system, so as we discussed this part 
mostly is the inert part. So, this entire part mostly is the inert part and this is the adaptive part and in the adaptive part this T helper cells has a major role in uh, mediating different in secreting different cytokines and mediating different actions. So, when it comes to the T helper cells the major two uh, effector T cells the major two subtypes are the Th1 and the Th2 the T helper 1 and the Th2 and these cells they can produce different classes of cytokines that are involved in different important functions. So, for example, Th1 can secrete interleukin 2. So, Th1 can secrete interleukin 2, interleukin 2 of course, helps in uh, CD8 plus cell differentiation. So, a differentiation of the CD8 plus cells, then it produces interferon INF gamma, interferon gamma which helps in uh, interferon gamma is uh, mainly involved in uh, different generating inflammatory responses in uh, different non-viral infections. So, uh, type 2 interferon and then uh, it can also produce the GMCSF the granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. So, which uh, mainly uh, helps in production of the uh, granulocytes and the macrophages. So, it produces more granulocytes, granulocytes and the macrophages. It can also produce interleukin 3, IL 3 and interleukin 3 is mostly uh, required for growth of the uh, myeloid progenitor cells. Just like the Th1, the Th2 can also produce different types of important interleukins or different types of important cytokines like interleukin 4, uh, interleukin 5 and interleukin 10. Interleukin 4 is primarily uh, required for antibody class switching on the B cells. So, antibody class switching on B cells. Interleukin 5 uh, is also required for class switching of antibodies and production of IgE. Production of IgE, we will discuss about the IgE when we will come to the hypersensitivity reactions, immunoglobulin type E. And then uh, it also produces interleukin 10, which is primarily an anti inflammatory response, which is required for anti inflammatory responses. So, looking into the overall picture back again, so if we start uh, from here, so this cytokines as the uh, as today's lecture topic is cytokines in the innate and the adaptive system. What are the different cytokines and what are the different roles they play in the innate and the adaptive system. So, cytokines uh, are mainly produced in the innate system. The cytokine is mainly produced uh, from the activated macrophages and the major cytokines or the primary cytokines that have been produced from these activated macrophages are the CXCL8, interleukin 6, interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 12 and TNF alpha. And the CXCL8 as the name it suggests it is a chemokine, uh, uh, it is a chemokine. It can help in the migration of the leukocytes. Interleukin 6 is primarily it helps in activation of the lymphocytes and it can also stimulate the liver. Interleukin 1 beta, it enhances the vascular permeability and it can also enhance the inflammatory responses. Interleukin 12 activates the NK cells, the natural killer cells and the CD4 plus cell, um, it can also help in the CD4 plus cell uh, differentiation um, as we have seen in case of the adaptive system. 
and then TNF alpha the tumor necrosis factor alpha which increases the vascular permeability and helps um, uh, uh, the complement proteins to move to the sites of action. And then so this the combined effect of this uh, the three major cytokines are this IL-6, the IL-beta and the TNF alpha. Uh, the, the combined effect of these three cytokines primarily in the inner system, it increases the body temperature. So, uh, makes the hypothalamus fat, increases the body temperature, induces uh, the bone marrow and it produces more neutrophils and sends more neutrophils to the site of action, activates the dendritic cells. So, helps in activation of the dendritic cells and um, allows them to move to the lymph node. And it also stimulates liver to produce different kinds of proteins like the complement proteins, mannose binding, lectins and all these things uh, which are then circulates in the blood which goes into the blood and uh, helps in opsonization of the pathogen. And then at the same time then you have this uh, uh, dendritic cells, the dendritic cells they starts to express on their surface the CXCR which is a chemokine receptor. So, the CXCR7. And this CXCR7 is uh, very quickly attracted towards the chemokine CCL, CCL21 which is a chemokine, it is a ligand to this receptor. So, that is why it is CCL and this is CXCR. So, once this is attracted it enters into the lymph node and it goes to and it presents uh, to the naive B and the T cells. Inside the lymph node the T cells they get activated and develops and then it uh, differentiates into the different subtypes of the T cells. You have the Th1, Th2, the Th17. So, these are the effector T cells. You have the T cytotoxic cells as well from the CD8 plus, the CD4 plus they after interaction with the antigen presenting cell they can then differentiate into the different uh, subtypes the Th1, 2, 17 or the Treg or the T follicular helper cells. And this basically depends on the presence of the cytokines which which kind of cytokines is available availability of the different cytokines. If interleukin 12 is available it becomes a Th1 cell, if interleukin 4 is available it becomes a Th2 cell, when it is interleukin 6 and IGF beta it becomes a Th17, if it is only IGF beta it develops to a T regulatory cell or Treg and if it is only IL-6 it develops into T follicular helper cell. Now, the two major types of this uh, T helper cells which are the Th1 and the Th2 are the major producers of the cytokines. So, they produce a lot of cytokines different types of cytokines and uh, they produce interleukin 2, uh, interferon gamma, uh, GMCSF, interleukin 3 and these are mainly produced from the Th1 and the Th2 produces IL-4, IL-5 and IL-10. So, uh, we will uh, stop here for this lecture today and uh, so this is an overview of the cytokines action mostly uh, what are the different cytokines. So, I, I will not go into very details of all the cytokines all of their actions that will be very complicated. So, it is better not to uh, so I try to uh, focus mostly on the major cytokines that are uh, required in the inert as well as in the adaptive system that are produced by the inert system and what are the downstream functions they perform. So, this was the major topic of this was the topic of today's discussion. Mm, so, we will not uh, uh, be uh, I will not be telling you about all the different cytokines that are being produced by the different types of T cells and what are the different functions they do. So, that is a very complex thing, very complex subject you can read by yourself if you have an interest in it. Um, so, uh, we will move on to a very interesting uh, topic on another specific class of cytokines the interferons. So, we will uh, be talking about the interferons in our next class. So, for today uh, it is that, that must be enough. Okay. Thank you.